ladies and gentlemen, I, there's not much more I can add to uh, my comments from the uh, my junior senator from Marion County. Uh, it's the road ahead for these folks is it's a harsh road. Uh, it's an unknown road filled with difficulties, and uh, they came to us asking for assistance. And it's not like many of the other stories we've heard in other areas, whether it be the steel mills, coal mines, and other private organizations. Many of us can even remember some of our communities throughout the state of West Virginia had shirt factories. We actually had a former member here from uh, the Senate whose hometown was known for the production of shirts. But it's, it's, it's not an old story. But Milan Pharmaceutical is a unique company. And there's individuals sitting up there in the gallery that are unique individuals themselves. Each one with a different story and a, and a pathway into Milan is different. They're good people. And in, my, in Morgantown, it's one of those things, you, you wonder how many people out of every 10 is affiliated with Milan. Because it's always when you have a conversation, you ask, oh, well, my brother-in-law works there. Do you know him? As a matter of fact, my brother-in-law does work there. My niece works there. Do you know her? It's, it's a homegrown business. And as I mentioned in a former floor speech, 61, 62 years old, and they began selling pharmaceuticals in the back of their car. And another unique story to that, just show you how homegrown it is, how much it is embedded in West Virginia roots. They flipped a coin to decide who was going to name the company and who was going to manage the company. Well, Milan Pharmaceuticals is the name. And then Mike Pushkar was the principal manager of the, of the business. But it has grown into something just unbelievable. But unfortunately, growth doesn't always, is not always a good thing when other people start looking at you. As maybe I would like to have that company to, to better my profit, bottom profit lines. And that's what has happened with Milan Pharmaceutical. They did too good of a job, some might say. And... They became too appealing to other corporations. And now they're going to take this segment that's in Morgantown, as the gentleman from uh, the senator from Marion County indicated, 850 non-union jobs and probably another 500 corporate jobs, office jobs, administration jobs on top of that. They're going to close that, that location, and they're going to send it overseas. They're going to send it overseas. And again, it goes back to what we sa I said earlier, you know, in regards to steel, steel being brought in from... Japan and China. Coal coming in from Germany. It's an age-old story that, unfortunately, West Virginia has played a part of for many, many years. I'd like to end that. I'd like to stop that path that we've obviously been pushed onto. And let's try and keep the current company in place. Let's keep Beatrice in place and allow that facility to remain open and those employees to to, to have their jobs. And, and the gentleman from Marion County said that we need both sides of the equation at the table for this to happen. They just can't sit in the room by themselves and determine their pathway forward. It requires the corporation to be on the other side of that table. So if these gentlemen stop by your office or in the next few days or in the next few weeks, I hope you'll stop and listen to them because it's a story that's repeated time and time again across the state of West Virginia. And it's one each and every one of us is familiar with. We're going to close it and move it someplace else. It's heartbreaking. It's absolutely heartbreaking. And it's not just Montgalia County. As we sat there today, we learned that it's across the state of West Virginia and Pennsylvania and Maryland that these folks travel all the way to Morgantown for employment. Good paying jobs, $75,000 a year. And a lot of the families are in a position where it's just that's their only employment because the pay is is that well. It's that good working for the pharmaceutical company for these individuals. So they've raised their kids there. They want to keep their kids there. Some of them are in our school. Some of them are in college. We want to keep those jobs in the state of West Virginia. But again, I ask you just to keep your doors open, keep your minds open, and have these conversations with them and ask them how can we help. Have them tell us the next step we need to take. Because right now I feel a little helpless as an individual. They sat with myself and the gentleman from Marion County, and we didn't have a lot to offer. We can listen, and I hope they appreciate that. But they need to, to help us, help them moving forward, and that's just a matter of communication. 
I know that they are working with uh, Senator Manchin's office, uh, either to find someone to come in and, and fill that void there in Morgantown, or, as the gentleman from Marion mentioned, tax credits to keep them there, keep Beatrice in the building. Because uh, as we found out today, it's just not a matter of enticing another pharmaceutical company in there. They actually have to have a product they're going to produce. And that's a very lengthy process of research and development of three and a half years and an FDA approval. So it's not just a matter of moving someone in. It's better to keep what we have. Thank you, Mr. President.